So we now begin the second night of Gretchen's conversation with her friends Sam and Dave. And of course the setup is Gretchen is a philosophy professor who's been in a very tragic accident. And although her mind is still fully aware, fully vivid, fully lucid, her body is expected to die within the next couple of days. And so she brought in her friends and said, hey guys, convince me my consciousness, my identity can survive bodily death. And so Dave enters the conversation very excited. He says, Gretchen, I've got a couple of things that you should consider that will really open up the possibility that you can survive bodily death. And the first thing is, consider when you first wake up in the morning. Consider before you've fully awoke and before you've opened your eyes and before you've confirmed that you're indeed in the same body to which you've become accustomed. Isn't it the case that you're still you? And you can think about this. When you first wake up in the morning, before you've opened your eyes, before you know that you're in the same place where you fell asleep the night before, can't you confirm that you are indeed you? Do you need to look around and see that you're still in the same body that you went to sleep in before you can confirm that you're you? And it seems to be the case that it's, it's, quite, it's quite true that indeed you are you before you know you're in the same body. Second, we need to also consider the possibility that perhaps we could awake in another person's body or in another creature's body, such as a cockroach. And if we were to do that, wouldn't we still be us? Wouldn't we still be the same person? Wouldn't our identity survive that sort of a, uh, a change over in, into a new vessel? And so they kind of shift gears at that point, and they consider and revisit the importance of continuity. And so last chapter on the first night, they considered a particular river, and they said, look, this river can be the same river, even if it stretches for hundreds of miles and we can say that it's the same river in this point, and also at this point, 100 miles downstream, so long as there's no break in the river, so long as there's that continuity. And so they use the similar example of a baseball game. They say that a baseball game can be the same baseball game, even if it stops between the third and the fourth innings and changes locations, perhaps due to weather, changes players, perhaps due to injury, changes into any number of factors, so long as that basic continuity is there, it's the same baseball game. But that continuity is important with the baseball game, just like it is with the river. And similarly, it's also important for our identity. And so last chapter in the first night, they considered that identity required a couple of different things. First of all, that it be forward-looking, that we have a proper sort of anticipation that a person with a particular identity would have, expecting that particular events would occur and impact them individually and not others. And also that we have properly acquired memories, that is, memories that are the result of actual experiences that actually happened to us. And so now they're adding a third component to the concept of identity, and that is this continuity. And so the team considers whether or not waking up in heaven with the same memories that they have right now and a new body would constitute genuine transference of their identity and, in, in essence, survival of bodily death. And they say, no, that, that's not necessarily by itself good enough because there are insane persons who believe that they've done all, all sorts of things. People that believe they're, they're Napoleon or that they're Jesus or that they're from another planet. But the fact that they sincerely believe this and the fact that they appear to have some sort of a uh, misplaced memory of these events doesn't mean that they're actually true, and it doesn't mean that they're actually Napoleon or Jesus or an alien. And so they also consider the fact that God could create multiple versions of us in, he in heaven, perhaps with the same memories in a very similar body that, to which we have right now, in fact, to an identical body. But would that constitute the survival of our bodily death? Uh, in the second instance, especially no, because identity implies singularity. And if you've got several of you walking around in heaven, that means none of them are really you, because there's going to be one of you. All right, so they reinforce the idea that our memories need to be genuinely acquired, the fact that we need to have that anticipation of future events, and also the fact that we need to have that consistency of consciousness, even though it can be interrupted with things such as sleep. So a couple of discussion questions for this chapter. First of all, notice that the group, at least I think, doesn't seem to fully appreciate the fact that our brains are physical, that they're a part of our physical body. And so they're trying to convince Gretchen that she can survive bodily death. She insists that she is her body, 
but they're kind of tiptoeing around the fact that consciousness doesn't seem to be physical and when our body deteriorates our brain is a part of that body and so if Gretchen insists that she's a part of her body all of this conversation is for naught unless she accepts the possibility that her consciousness is perhaps non-physical also notice that the group is engaged in conceptual analysis that is they started off the conversation trying to convince Gretchen that she could survive bodily death but quickly the conversation turned to what does it even mean to be me before we can say that I in fact can survive bodily death we need to figure out what in the world I am and so that began the unpacking of the concept of identity and they've entertained lots of different candidate factors that would build into that conception and those that seem to make sense they've embraced those that seem to not make sense they've thrown out so the first question is do you do you agree that it's the, the case that the group isn't fully appreciating appropriately appreciating the fact that our brains are indeed a part of our physical body is that something that Gretchen seems to be recognizing not recognizing and what impact do you think it should be having on the conversation at this point the second question is this conceptual analysis give me an example throughout the, the first two chapters a good example of some conceptual analysis where they've decided to embrace or throw something out when it comes to the concept of identity and then also give me an example of conceptual analysis not found in the reading I want you to analyze some new concept show me how you could do it thanks so much i look forward to your applause